In this video, we'll go through how to use Bear React Native Packages in building an Expo app. By Bear React Native Packages, I'm referring to the third-party or external libraries that usually cannot be used in an Expo app unless you reject the app from Expo, which makes you lose all the convenient features that come with Expo. This is because they require custom native code which might be complex to handle so Expo hides them from the workflow. For those, you usually need to have either Android Studio or Expo to work with them, for Android and iOS respectively. Now with the help of Expo Dev Client and ES Build, we can enjoy all the great libraries in the React Native community which are outside of the Expo SDK without exposing all the complex native code. So if a package in the Expo SDK is problematic, you can use an alternative in the React Native community. So let's run through it. So the first thing we obviously need is an Expo project. And with Node and Expo CLI installed, we can easily create one using the NPS create Expo app command. Once the project is ready, we can navigate to it and open it in our favorite code editor. Now we need to install the bare React Native library that we want to work with. So for example, we can install the React Native date picker. We copy the name of the package and install it using Expo. So over here in the project directory, make use of the Expo install command. Now some of the packages require additional plugin configurations. So with each external package that you install, ensure that you check the documentation for this information. For example, the React Native Date Picker here doesn't need any extra plugin configurations for Expo. But for a package like the Native Facebook Sign-in package, under Expo installations, you see that a plugin is required here. So to configure this, you go to your app.json, under the Expo key, you add the plugins key, and then you add the name of the package. Now with our native package installed already, we need to create a development build for our project. Because the package we are using is native and requires custom native code, we can use the Expo Google Client app to run our project. So the development build we will create here will serve as our custom Expo Google app which will contain all the native code that we need. So with the ES CLI package installed already, we'll make use of the ES build command. We then specify the profile of our build to be development. And then we specify the platform for our build. For this project, I want to create a build for both iOS and Android. So I can specify all here to do both at the same time. The first requirement for the process is to log in with an Expo account. If you don't have one already, you can easily get one by visiting expo.dev forward slash sign up and then you provide the details here to sign up an account so over here you enter your username or email and then you enter your password now expo dev client is a package that is required for this process so we hit y here to install it after the installation we need to create an es project for our work so over here we hit y as well now we need an android bundle id and one is suggested for us so we hit enter here to accept it Note that we could have typed anything that we wanted there in the reverse domain format. Now we generate a key store for our application, so we hit Y again. With the Android key store generated, the Android part of the project will be compressed and uploaded to the ES service. Now we move to the iOS section. For this, we start with the bundle identifier, which is similar to the bundle ID on Android. So we can accept the suggested value by hitting enter. Now at this step, we are required to log into an Apple account with paid membership. Since the resulting build will be installed on an iOS device, Apple requires that build to be signed and it can only be done with an Apple account with paid membership. So we hit Y to proceed. We then enter our Apple ID here and then we enter the password. This will fetch some other information from your account. Now we are asked about the distribution certificate which will be used to sign the build. So we hit Y again. Now at this point, we need to register an iOS device for our project. This will be the device that the resulting build will be installed on and can be used to monitor the project while developing it. So we hit Y to do that. Now the easiest way to do this will be the website option. This will give us a QR code that we can scan on the device to register it. So on my iOS device, I'll look for the camera app and then I'll point the camera at the QR code. This will open the page in the browser and can go ahead to download the profile and now allow the download to continue. Now it says the profile has been downloaded. So now we we'll visit the settings. Over here at the very top, you will see profile downloaded. So I'll press on that and then I'll go ahead to install the profile. Over here, you are required to enter your passcode. With that done, you can proceed with the installation. Once the installation is complete, it will lead us back to the web page which says that 
our device is ready to run internal distribution builds. Now for this step, you can register as many devices that you want to register. If some other devices are not available now, you can register them later with the ES device create command. Just that those devices will not be able to run this particular build, but will be able to run other builds that were created right after registering that device. With the device registered, you can hit any key on the keyboard to continue. Now the device that we just registered has been fetched here and we can hit enter to continue. I don't need push notifications now so I can choose no. Now this will start the build process and all we have to do is to wait for them to complete. When the build completes, you will be presented with two QR codes representing the Android and iOS builds. So on my Android device, I'll open the camera app and then scan the first QR code. This should open up a page in the browser and I can install my build from here. So this will download the APK for the build and I can install it when it's done. While it's downloading, let's do the same for the iOS. So for the iOS, we make use of the second link. So for this one as well, I'll open my camera app and point it to the QR code. I'll then proceed to install the app and back in my app menu, I'll see that this will start installing. As you can see, it's installing in the bottom corner here and it's done installing. With the Android APK done downloading as well, I can proceed to install it. The Play Store might give you a warning, but I'll go ahead to install it anyway. And the app has been installed successfully. Now to run the project, we go back to our command line and make use of the expo start command. In addition to this, we'll pass the dev client flag. This will generate a QR code for us, which we can use to run the app. So for the first time, we'll scan the QR code on each device using the camera app. So starting with the iOS, I'll open my camera app and scan the QR code. This will bundle the app and open it on the device, and I'll do the same thing for the Android. This will also go through the process and open the app in the client. With both devices running the app like so, we can proceed with the development in our code editor. So over here, we can make use of our React Native package with no problems. So for instance, I'll copy the import statement here and add it to my app.js and then I can copy the other content and use it here. So here I'll copy the state and the date picker. I can cut the date picker from here and put it below the text here. And the date picker is displayed with no problems and it's equally responsive on both devices. So for this whole process of using the external libraries in the Expo app, the trick is to install the package and create the development build for it. If you haven't installed another package that requires native code, you don't need to create a build for it again, so you can continue developing with the same build that you created. So at the start of creating the build, you can ensure that you install most of the packages that you need, so that you don't have to be constantly creating new builds. So we've considered how to create the development builds in this video. For the production builds for iOS and Android as well, we considered that in the video on your screen now. Thanks for watching and also special thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel.